Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this lesson, we will be taking a look at WP Query, or in other words, we will learn how to take control of what is being fed into the loop. So we will learn how to loop through any set of posts at any time in any theme file. I definitely think that getting your feet wet with WP Query is one of the aha moments of creating WordPress themes. This should be a lot of fun, so let's get started. Currently, you are staring at the heart and soul of WordPress themes. This is the loop, or at least this is an empty skeleton version of the loop. Now, you're most likely already familiar with this. We've covered this in an earlier lesson, but let's take a quick run through the flow of the loop. So we begin with an if statement. We're saying if we have posts to loop through, then loop through them. Otherwise, or else, display a no content fallback message and then end our if statement. So the structure is incredibly simple. The real magic happens within the while statement. This is the code that gets repeated once for each post. Now the reason we love the loop as theme creators is because it gives us 100% complete control over how we format or output our posts. So within this while statement, we can include any combination of PHP and HTML we want. We get to manually choose if we display the title of the post, the body text, the author, the category, the date. We can use any bits of custom HTML we want. So in short, we have complete control. However, something that we have had zero control over is which posts are being looped through. By default, the URL or permalink that you are currently viewing on the website determines which posts get looped through. So this may be obvious, but if we're viewing the blog index of our website, then obviously all posts will be fed into the loop and looped through. If we're viewing a monthly archive, then posts from that month will be fed into the loop. If we're viewing a category archive URL, then posts of that category will be fed into the loop. I think you get the idea. If we're viewing an author archive, posts by that author will be fed into the loop. So WordPress is great at using the URL to query the appropriate information from the database. But what if we want to take control of that query? So for example, what if on our home page, underneath this intro content, we want to have a column on the left side that displays the two most recent posts from the opinion category. And maybe on the right side, we want to include the two most recent posts from the news category. So since this is our home page, the URL is just our base site URL. We obviously can't rely on that to query the exact posts that we want. So we need to take control of the loop ourselves. And this is exactly where WP query comes into play. So let's get started writing a bit of code. I'm going to hop over to my text editor. I'm viewing the frontpage.php file because we want to edit the home page of our theme. So down here underneath this main content, this is where we will be writing our code. So if I type hello world, you can see it displays where we want to include the new content. So I'm just going to paste in an empty loop skeleton. So let's work on this together. I will begin by adding a comment to stay organized. So opinion posts loop begins here. So our goal is to pull the two most recent opinion posts into the loop. Let's see if we can have a bit of fun on our way there. So I'm going to create a new WP query. WP query is a class that ships with WordPress out of the box. And within these parentheses, we can feed it a whole slew of options. We are interested in pulling in posts from a certain category, so I will begin with cat. Now we need to enter the numerical ID of the category that we're looking for. So we were interested in opinion, so we can head over to our WordPress dashboard. Under the posts module, look for categories. Here is the opinion category, let's click on that. Now in the URL bar, you can find out the ID of the category by looking towards the end of the URL and you'll see ID equals and then a number. So I know that the ID for the opinion category in my installation of WordPress is seven. So we can say cat equals seven. Now when this code runs, the WP query class will return an object which contains posts from the opinion category. And we want to at least temporarily save that object so we can access it within the loop. 
So at the beginning of this line, I'm going to create a variable. Let's name it opinion posts. So now the object that is full of the opinion posts will live within the variable named opinion posts. Next, we need to pass this object that we just created into the loop, which is incredibly simple. We just type the name of our object, opinion posts, hyphen greater than. So now we're running the have posts method on our object. And then we'll do the same thing in the while statement. So while there are still posts to loop through within our object, so I'm just going to copy this, paste it before the have posts in the while statement. And then again, when we get to the the post method, I'll paste in our object name and the object operator symbol. And that's it. We're all set. We're off to the races. So now within the while statement, we can output whatever we want to output for each post. So let's output a heading level two element with the title of each post. So we'll drop out of PHP here. We'll drop back into PHP here. So then we can include HTML here. So within our heading level two, we will then drop back into PHP and output the title, the title. So if I save and refresh, here are the titles of opinion posts. Now our goal was to only pull in the two most recent posts and I see three. So back in our code, when we are creating our opinion post object with the WP query class, we can pass along different parameters aside from just picking a category. So now I can include the and symbol and say posts per page equals two. So if I save and refresh, now our object only contains two posts. Now by default, WordPress will order its query results by date. So it wants to pull in the newest content first, but we can override this. So what if we want to pull in our results based on the title? We can say and order by equals title. So now it's going to pull in two posts from the opinion category in reverse alphabetical order. So if I had a post that started with Z, it would be pulled in. This is because by default, WP Query uses an order of descending, but we could also set this to ascending. So now you will see that we're selecting our posts by the title and then we're ordering them alphabetically in an ascending fashion, so A to Z. Now that was a side note. <laughs> we don't need order or order by in our specific example because we just wanna pull in the two newest posts, but I did wanna show you what WP Query is capable of. You can do all sorts of creative things with your parameters. So for example, if you wanted to pull in just a single random post every page refresh, you could set post per page to one and then set order by to rand for random. So if you're curious about all of the possibilities and all of the parameters, check out the official WordPress documentation. I will include a link to that, but I don't wanna to get too sidetracked. So let's get back to our goal at hand. So we've pulled in the two most recent opinion posts. Now, before we worry about pulling in the two most recent news posts, there's something that I probably should have showed you earlier in the lesson. So there's a habit that I want you to get into. Anytime you set up a custom loop using WP query at the end of the loop. So after the end if statement, I want you to run WP reset post data. So what this function does is it prevents our custom WP query loops from ever disrupting the main natural URL based loops that WordPress runs on its own. So this function is relinquishing control of the global post variable and it's saying, okay, WordPress, you're the boss. I don't want to disrupt your URL based queries. So let's just reset the data. You're back in control. We've ran our custom loop. We're good to go. Here you go. So with that taken care of, now we can focus on importing the two most recent news posts. So I'm just going to copy this code that we've set up, paste it in, and now let's just adjust it. So change this comment to say news posts loop begins here. I'll change the object name to be news posts. I can just copy and paste that in these few locations. And we need to be sure to change our query parameter. So instead of category seven, let's go to our dashboard. We want the news category. You can see that it has an ID of six. So in our parameter, category equals six, 
save, refresh our page. Here are the two latest news posts. Now, technically, the lesson could end here because we don't need to deal with WP query anymore. But I did promise that we would set up two columns. So let's get to it. So in our theme file, I will scroll up above our first custom loop. Let me drop out of PHP and drop back into PHP for this custom loop. So in this line, I can include HTML. So I'm going to create a new div. I'll give it a class of home columns and also a class of clear fix because we are going to be floating different columns. Now within this div, I'll create a div for each column. So I'll name this first div one half, and then I'll create another div named one half and give it a class of last. So now I just want to paste in the custom loop for opinion into this div and the custom loop of news into this div. And then we'll write a bit of CSS. So here is the opinion loop. Let me cut and paste this into that first div. Be sure to close out PHP. And now let's move the news loop. Cut, and I'll paste it into this one half div. Be sure to open PHP accordingly. Now if I save and refresh, we won't see any changes, but we now have CSS classes that we can target in our style sheet. So in our theme folder, I will open style.css. Let's create a bit of room, add a comment to stay organized. Post columns, you could give it any label you want. That's probably not the best label in the world, but oh well. <laughs> so let's create a rule for the one half class. Let's give it a width of 45%. We'll float it to the left. We'll give it margin right of 10%. Now we want our columns to total 100% and we would be over the total of 100% unless we target that div that had a class of last, so the second half column, and give it a margin right of zero. So if we save and refresh, there are the two columns. Let's add a bit of space vertically between this intro content and our two columns. So to do that, you remember that we created a parent div that has a class of home columns. So I will select that home columns, give it a bit of padding top, let's say 30 pixels. Much better. Now in terms of what we actually output for each post, that's completely up to you. So we probably don't want to output literally just the title, we would probably want this to be a link. So we can wrap the title in an A element. And for the href, we can output the permalink. And we would probably also want to output perhaps an excerpt for each post. The excerpt. And then we can obviously just copy and paste this output within the wall statement from the opinion side over to the news side. Now there are a million things we could do to improve the output, the format, the styling of these posts. I'll let you use your own imagination. I don't want this to turn into an HTML and CSS lesson. I want this video to be somewhat focused on WP query and the loop, but just to whet your appetite. By adding a bit of custom HTML, fine tuning the CSS, and applying some of the basic concepts we've learned in earlier WordPress lessons, you can easily put together something that looks like this. It's really just a matter of customizing what you're doing within the while statement, and then refining your HTML and CSS. If you're interested in dissecting how I put together this appearance, feel free to download the zip of the theme file in this current state. I will include a link to that. I hope you're excited to create custom loops using WP Query in any of your theme files on any page, however you please. I definitely think this is one of the aha moments of learning WordPress. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye. Just a quick note at the end here. If you or anyone you know are interested in learning HTML5 and CSS3, 
You might be interested in a new course that I just published. There is a half off coupon code in the description for this video. The course teaches these two languages from the ground up. We learn how to create our own responsive grid, add transitions and animations. We learn about cross browser support and feature detection, and we even learn the basics of SAS. It's definitely something to consider if you're new to web design and you want to get started on the right foot.